dear brothers uh, last uh, few weeks we have been studying about the subject about church so we have seen from the scriptures uh, who is the true church that uh, whether it is the believers uh, the followers uh, we have clearly understood that it is only the followers of christ uh, who are called as the true church and what is the difference between a believer and a follower we have seen that one who denies themselves carries the cross and follows uh, the footsteps of jesus they are called as the true church and uh, we also seen uh, the little flock who are consecrated to the lord uh, who make their calling election sure who are faithful to lord until uh, their uh, death we also seen the other class of people who are not able to achieve the crown but uh, they fall down because of unfaithfulness uh, because of uh, weakness uh, because of uh, not being overcomers these are the great multitude and uh, uh, so these are two class of people who attain the heavenly salvation uh, the little flock 144000 and the great multitude so today we will see what is the difference between uh, these two uh, group of people the little flock uh, uh, and the great multitude there are lot of comparisons uh, in the bible why some people fall into the a uh, great multitude while well, uh, why some people are more than overcomers so first example is uh, about the example of esau and jacob we all know esau and jacob were the sons of the same father then but uh here we see that uh, esau was the elder son but esau sold his birthright because for a small meal and uh, jacob received that uh, you see birthright that uh, blessings of the first born so we read in the bible in genesis 25 chapter verse 32 32 uh, like this can uh, brother peter peter brother can you read are you able to read genesis 25 chapter verse 32 32 peter brother you are there okay it says and uh, isau said uh, to jacob feed me i pray thee with a small red pottage for i am faint therefore was his name called as edom and jacob said tell me this day thy birthright and esau said behold i am at the point of to die and what profit shall this birthright be to me friends so, carelessly you see he sold his birthright uh, peter brother you are there can you read the verses brother is it possible yes okay ah, okay okay thank you so next i'll tell you thank you very much brother so esau sold his birthright but later you see he repented of his mistake and tried to get this birthright you see with lot of tears but uh, unfortunately dear brethren it was too late that is uh, the difference between the great multitude and the little flock the little flock are ready to sacrifice everything you see to do the lord's will but you see yes our you see the brethren you see yes our are quite selfish people you see they cling on to the world you see cling on to the desires of the world blessings of the world what life because of which they are even ready to deny their lord you see and that is the reason they lose their uh, birthright the birthright the first uh, you see born sons uh, blessings uh, 
the double portion is father's property you see dear brethren this is the promise which god has made for the little flock the double portion you see the double blessings uh, to be partakers of the divine nature to be like god uh, to sit with jesus on his throne dear brethren you see therefore in hebrews 12 16 and 17 apostle paul wants us uh, to be very careful uh, peter brother read hebrews 12 chapter 16 and 17 brother lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his bride birth right for a know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance so he sought it carefully with tears see to he sought carefully with tears even though he sought carefully with tears lot of tears he did not get it dear brethren this is the difference yeah after repenting and crying what is the use when the time is no more the great multitude lose great opportunities like this one unnecessary create trouble problem which actually you see disturbs them read 15th verse also brother peter brother please uh, read 15 verse 15 looking diligent he list any man fall of the grace of god list any root of bitterness spring of trouble and thereby many fail see looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of god how can they fail how can they fall from the grace of god when a root of bitterness springs and troubles them you see and thus defiling them this is what actually happened to esau you see and hence what happened esau lost the crown you know after a lot of weeping he could not get back the blessings similarly there was a chance uh, if we weep now we can get the blessings but after everything is over the due time is over no use of weeping okay the second example is about king and queen you see the king and the queen the church is actually called to be the queen of jesus and jesus is the king let us read psalms 45 9 brother Uh, Peter, brother, can you read Psalms forty-five nine? Ah, uh, Peter, brother, Psalms forty-five nine. You can read from the screen if it's possible. Oh, sorry, kings' daughters were among the honorable women. Upon the right hand did stand the queen in gold of of fear. You see the king's daughter. Uh, You see, king's daughter, uh, she is honorable among her. She is very she. She is upon the right hand, uh, you see, of the king, and she is completely decorated with gold of Ophir, precious uh, gold, as uh, gold of Ophir. So, in uh, verse nine, it tells uh, king's daughter were among the honorable women, and upon the right hand. Uh, did she stand in gold of ophir you see the gold of ophir was one of the purest of the golds available during those times as we tell today 24 karat gold purest of all the golds and what does uh, you see uh, god advised to this uh, daughter who is completely decorated in gold verse 10 and verse 11 brother Peter, brother, verse ten and verse eleven. Okay, hearken, our daughter, and consider the inclined thin ear. Forget also thin one people and the father house. So shall the king greatly desire the beauty for he is the Lord and worship the of him. You see what does the advice God give? Oh daughter, consider. 
and inclined an ear, forget an own people and thy father's house. And a king shall greatly desire the beauty. You see? That means the advice is given to forget the father's house. Who is our father? It is our father Adam. In this world, God's children should forget this world. You see, they are completely dedicated to the Lord. If you want to go for the heavenly salvation, we need to forget, uh, you see, a father's house, earth. And uh, our own people means what? Uh, the world. Uh, we should forget the world completely. Then only the king will desire us. Uh, you see? And how is the queen? It says, uh, the queen is glorious within and the cloth is of pure gold. So how is the queen? She is not outwardly beautiful, isn't it? So the church was going to be the bride of Christ. Then our outwardly beautiful, very grand, neat, decent, very good people. They are all good within, inside. That is what God sees. When Samuel went to anoint David, he was surprised to see that God had told to anoint a lad. But God said, See not at his countenance, uh, for man looketh at his uh, outward, uh, but God looketh at his heart. Uh. God sees our heart condition, dear brethren, how beautifully we are decorating ourselves within, like Christ likeness. Uh. And how is our cloth? Uh? It is of pure gold. Uh. And uh, how this uh, robe was decorated? Verse 14. Read, brother. Peter, brother. Verse 14. Read, please, uh, read. Psalms 45 verse 14. Be brought unto the king in remain of the work. The virgins are companions that follow her. See, she should be brought uh, unto the king in the raiment uh, of needlework. You see, a cloth is fully. Decorated with what? Needlework it seems. Uh, and virgins, uh, they follow her. So how is this needlework done? You see, we all know about embroidery work. Uh, it is actually handmade. No machine can do all the things and all. To do this embroidery, you see, the cloth uh, has to be pierced with a sharp needle. Goes several times up and down. See, then only the beautiful, uh, you see, the gold uh, design will be you see, come up. Without pain, nothing of the design, you see, it will come up. Imagine, so it's so painful to so just uh, pierce the needle up and down. Similarly, in our life, uh, in the life of the true church, uh, there is a lot of pain, lot of sufferings. But in those sufferings, uh, in those pain only, God is preparing the beautiful character likeness of Christ, the beautiful robe which is completely decorated with golden characters of the Lord. And uh, verse 14 and 15, it also continues to say that, you see, the virgin are companions. Now, who is the virgin are companions? You see, it is uh, the the bride uh, is the lack and 44,000 and her companions are the great multitude. You see, the great multitude lost the opportunity to be the queen, you see. To be the bride. Why? Because their cloth was not embroidered with uh, the golden characters of Christ. Uh, with the beautiful character of Christ. Uh, dear brethren, so developing Christ likeness is very important. Not just uh, wearing the robe. So you see, in olden days, uh, they used to test a woman whether she would really love the bri bridegroom or not. How? By gifting her a robe. And after giving one year time, she has to decorate uh, that uh, robe with beautiful embroidery. If she has uh, made beautiful embroidery, you see, that clearly shows that uh, she really loved the bridegroom. Because those days there was no WhatsApp, email, letter, all these things. Only, you see, very rare communications through uh, written uh, this one document only. Hence, uh, uh, that shows that she really want to love the, you see, Huh? Our uh, bridegroom. So, similarly, the people who love the Lord, even though it is a very painful process, uh, they take it. Uh, they develop Christ likeness. Uh, you see, okay? 
Why? Because they want to be pleasing to the Lord. But a great multitude, instead of pleasing the Lord, you see, they forget to please the Lord. They try to please the people. That is the time that they lose the crown. What does Apostle Paul say in Galatians? Sir? Now, dear brethren, whom shall I please? Shall I please men or shall I please God? To say, dear brethren, sends the great multitude lose the crown. Fall to be of the, you see, the great multitude. Okay. Now, third comparison is about the foolish and the wise virgins. It is given to us in Matthew 25, chapter verses 1 to 4. Peter, brother, can you read Matthew 25, chapter 1 to 4? Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lambs. Thank you. Sir. So here it says, uh, you see, uh, that uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven is like uh, unto ten virgins uh, which took the lamps, uh, you see, to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. What is the difference between the wise and foolish? If you see, the wise took the oil in the lamp as well as in the, you see, uh, in the vessel. But the foolish did not take oil in the vessel. They took oil only in the lamp. Dear brethren, so hence what happened? Uh, you see, the uh, the bridegroom actually tarried. Verse uh, 5, brother. Verse 5 and 6, brother. Huh? 5. While the bridegroom tarries, they all the slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a carry made. Behold, the bridegroom come Go you out to meet him. Aha. Uh -huh. You see? What happened? Uh, the bridegroom tarried. Jesus uh, tarried his him. So what happened? Everybody slept. In the midnight, there was a cry calling, Behold the bridegroom. So immediately, everybody woke up. Uh, they trimmed the lamps. Uh, but what happened? Uh, you see? The foolish did not have sufficient of oil. Uh, the lamps were going out. Uh, isn't it? Uh, then the wise, they had the oil in the vessel. They put it with the lamp. It began to shine brightly. You see? But the foolish did not have oil. What did they ask? They went and asked to the, you see, the wise virgins, please give us a little bit of your oil. Now, what was the reply given? Verse 8 and verse 9, brother. Huh? Peter, brother, verse 8 and verse 9. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your well, for our lambs are gone out. Hmm. Then why is verse 9? Hmm. And the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us, and you but go a rather than rather to them, them that sell and buy for yourself. Okay. Buy for yourself. So, by the time they went to the market to buy it, you see, the door was closed. So, what is the meaning of this one? What is virgins? The church is compared to the virgins, dear brethren. You see, read, brother. 2 Corinthians 11, 2, brother. You can read from for the I am For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have expose you to one husband that I may repent you as a just virgin to Christ. You see? What does it say? I have exposed, engaged you to one husband Christ. So church and the Christ are engaged. This is the bride. This is the bridegroom. So they are all waiting the second advent of Jesus. You see? Now who all went to meet him? The Both the wise and the foolish. You see, they had the oil in the lamp. Both had oil in the lamp. Lamp in the Bible means the word of God. Thy word is like a lamp unto my feet. Uh, you see, and a light unto my path. Uh, Psalm 7 and 
And what does the oil mean? We all know that oil was used in the Old Testament to anoint somebody. So oil in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit of God. And this vessel, what is this vessel? Holy Spirit is there in the lamp. You see, lamp is Bible. You see, the Holy Spirit is there in the Bible. There is no doubt at all. But that Holy Spirit should be within us now. You see, it should be in our life. Oh, the character likeness of oh, Christ. The fruits of the Holy Spirit, where it should be, it should be in the vessel. This is what the foolish virgin lack. You see, the foolish virgins doesn't have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Hence, they are not able to meet the Lord when he is supposed to gather the church unto himself. So what did Lord advise? You go and take it from the market. You see, the great multitude lack the spirit of consecration. You see, they can't get this spirit of consecration by bargaining from somebody. Brother, please give us your Holy Spirit. Give us your spirit of consecration. They can't give it. No. We can't share our zeal, energy, love for the Lord to somebody else. It has to be gained by themselves from the world. What is the market? That is the world. You see, there is a seller who sells in the market. Now, who is the seller? The owner of the oil, the owner of the God's Holy Spirit is God. We need to purchase the Holy Spirit from God. How? Purchase means what? You know, God gives us for money. No, we need to sacrifice. We need to purchase. We need to give ourselves. Not only in just immersion. Pay. It should cost us something. Give out uh, our selfish aims, ambitions, everything. What did Jesus say? He that doesn't deny himself first thing, carry the cross and follow me, cannot be my disciple at all. Forget about going to heaven, that's the next thing. Huh? You see, disciple is not. Uh, neither can you be of the great material, neither can you be of the little flock. Huh? So this basic thing a Christian has to do, you see, then only God gives us the Holy Spirit. Uh, Sacrifice. How was the sacrifice of the Lord? It was pleasing to God. as pleasing aroma. Hence God filled him with the Holy Spirit without measure. But the foolish virgin, they go to the world to gain this experience, to gain this through experience. By the time they gain it through experience, it will be very late. The door will be closed. Dear brother man, this is the difference between the great but the little flock. They lack energy, zeal, by the time they come, everything will be over. Okay. Well, the next difference is in Gideon. You see, Gideon in Judges 7 chapter. Please read everybody. In uh, It is given in Judges 7 chapter. Israel, you see, was attacked by the Midianites. Midianites uh, came with 120,000 people. Army, the great army, to attack uh, Israel. Now, Gideon was a, a small man. Gideon said, Lord, what do we do? God said, give a shout to Israel. Who is uh, interested in war? Let them come. So Gideon went and told the Midian to come to war. Who is uh, willing to uh, fight for uh, Israel? Let them come. You see, as soon as they give the call, you know, lot of people, you see, came to fight against uh, Midianites. Then God said, you see, no, 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 this is very too much. Huh? This crowd, uh, this group is uh, too large uh, for uh, me. Then God tells, uh, you see, first initial in the call was given, 32,000 people came. Now God tells to Gideon, go and tell them, whoever is afraid, okay, let him depart, uh, you see, and go back uh, to Mount Gilead. Immediately when the call was given, 22,000 went back. Only 10,000 people were remaining, brother. Read, brother. Judges 7, chapter verse 3, brother. Peter, brother. Now, therefore, go to the people, saying, Who is uh, fearful and afraid, let him return, depart, or leave from. Mountain, Mount Gilead, and the error of the people to make in two thousands and they remained ten thousand. You see, they remained only ten thousand. Uh, you see, and uh, 
God tells even this 10,000 is too much. Bring them to the water. I shall test them in the water. So once they came to the water, the way they drank the water, the people were filtered. You see, those who drank uh, by drinking, uh, see, by those who drank the water by putting their mouth to the water, and uh, the people who took it in their hand uh, and drank it, these two people were separated. You see, uh, read verse uh, 7. Read verse, uh, read verse 6, brother. Huh? Read verse 6, sorry. And the number of them that left putting their hand to their mouth were 300 men, but all the rest of the people bow uh, down onto their knees to drink water. You see, the people that left, how much were there? 300. God tells, select this 300. I will give victory. Now send back uh, 9,700 back to the home. Uh, you see, the brethren. So 9,700 people went back. Uh, then for this uh, 300 people, God told, take a, you see, uh, you see, a, a pot, you see, a mud pot and take a lamp in their hand and take a trumpet. So, Blow the trumpet loudly, break the, you see, the pitcher, you see, the mud pot, and let the light shine brightly, you see. And in this way, I will give victory to people of Israel or the Midianites. It was 20, brother. Huh? Peter Brother, verse 20. And the three. Okay, I think uh, there is a network issue. Uh, I can read. Uh, uh, you, you can come a little bit for the network area. 20. Sorry. Uh, I think there is a network disturbance in your area. Come a little bit where you have network, brother. Now you can read. Okay. Okay, and uh, through the... Hearing me? Good. Super. And three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands. They blew uh, with all the carriage and sword of the Lord and of Gideon. You see? And sword of the Lord and Gideon. So by the time they came down, you see what happened? Uh, the entire uh, Midianite army flew away. They took the loot and came back. What does this mean now? Uh? The spiritual Israel are going for a fight. Now, whom are we fighting? Are we fighting any brothers and sisters? No. Our fight is against the spiritual wickedness. You see, the powers and principalities in heaven, you see, in the air, so, sorry, that means the fallen angels and the devil himself. So, we have warfare with them, you see. And how many people is God calling? You see, God gives a call. Who wants to believe in Jesus and be saved? Let everybody come. Now, how many people came? There are 32,000 people came. So similarly, what did Jesus say? Matthew 22, 14. Many are called, few are chosen. Everybody, many people are called to believe in Jesus. But how many want to follow Jesus? It is just the little flock of 10,000. The balance 22,000 are gone back to the world. So they are told, if you have fear, of fighting, go back to the world. The worldly people, those who have fear to fight, you see, against the devil and the fallen angels, against their own weaknesses, they tend to draw back and go back to the world. You see, those are the believers. But the faithful followers are told to come down to the water. Now, what is the meaning of water? Water means the truth. You see, now, how we receive the truth that really matters our salvation. 
are we just receiving the truth just casually you see listening this year and leaving it in this year you see then we are the great multitude who just putting their mouth inside the water and drinking there is no use to them if we drink water in such a way if we are receiving the truth just for entertainment casually listening from this side and leaving it that side it's of no use at all he should work in us the truth should be clearly you see scrutinized understand the difference between the truth and the false the truth shall should be received in our hand you see then praise god and drink it assimilate it digest it understand the truth you see you know almost nearly from 5 to 6 months how many a uh, beautiful truths we have been listening uh, three world three ways ransom then in second chapter seventh chapter the immortal soul the bible says the soul dies the truth about hell that hell is a place uh, of graveyard is not a place of torment you see and the beauty will subject of the church who is the true church how are we receiving it just uh, casually uh? many people during the days of jesus uh, you see they followed 4000 5000 they all followed only for benefits uh. none followed because of the truth uh. they did not give heed to listen to the word of god that uh, they so what happened uh? you see they are the people who are not taking this truth uh. so bible tells about them let us read romans 10 chapter 2 and 3 brother for i have heard that they have a zeal of god but not according to knowledge for the being ignorant of god's righteousness and going uh, about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of god see for i bear record uh, that they have zeal of god israel people had zeal of god but it was not according to knowledge what is the use similarly today christians have zeal energy but it is not according to the biblical knowledge at all they try to establish a own right as no, will god be pleased god rejected israel similarly we also will be rejected you see we should learn the truth to follow the master read brother second timothy 37 brother ever learning and never ever to come to the knowledge of the truth see, ever learning always listening always attending classes always listening to class good is really appreciate that. but what is the bible say this say some people who are ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of truth never able to understand discern what is the truth understand the bible says the soul is not able to understand it at all they are not able to understand that jesus died for the whole world in christ second advent when he is going to come on this earth and rule for 1000 years all the dead will come back to life on this earth some people still believe that there is a matter of hell and soul you see hell and heaven sorry all the unbelievers will go to heaven sorry all the unbelievers will go to hell all the believers only will go to heaven you see but they don't know about the salvation worldly salvation world salvation in 1000 years they will all be reject on the same earth and come to the knowledge of truth but then this is the meaning so therefore apostle paul says steady show thyself approved the word of god a workman that need not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of god steady we need to study the word of god even not just casually keep on listening but really understand grasp it you see they were given only three things a pitcher instead which there was a you see lamp you see and a, a trumpet what is this one the lamp is the burning spirit of god which is hidden in this picture in this mud part of the earth and vessel god holy spirit is where inside our body second corinthians 47 brother peter brother read second corinthians 47 is treasures in the body of earth and not of us but we have this treasure in the earth and vessel that the excellence of the power may be of god and not of us we have this treasure the holy spirit in this earth and vessel we need to break the earth and vessel then only the light will shine what did jesus say in matthew 5:16 let your light so shine before men shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify god which is in heaven 
not our uh, you see uh, actions uh, hmm? which is uh, doesn't bring glory to god which is like darkness the works of darkness uh, dear brethren you see huh? so the things of uh, darkness and secret uh, dear brethren we are told to break this certain vessel this world character world nature has to be broken then only the god's holy spirit will shine brightly then the trumpet has to be blown trumpet means what uh, proclamation of god's word it is not only that we build a christ likeness in our uh, body we need to also preach the word of god be always ready to proclaim the word of god in and out of season whether it is comfortable for you uncomfortable be ready to preach the word of god brethren so this is the difference between the great multitude and the lack and 44000 brethren yes how you see and jacob you want to be like yes how want to be like jacob the question is you see unto everybody else whether we want to be of the you see the queen or our companion whether we want to be of the you see the wise virgin or the foolish virgin whether we want to be of the gideon's band or the band who love to be in a pleasurable life dear brethren so these are differences let us this keep in mind and try to overcome all the weaknesses which is, and live a life which is pleasing to the lord may god bless this